On the 18th of November 2017, Sinterklaas, or St. Nicholas, made his traditional entry into the Netherlands, this time arriving at Dokkum. Going to meet him, however, were two busloads of protesters, mainly from Randstad, so the area in North and South Holland that's most populated in the Netherlands, to protest the use of blackface when representing his servants, who are called Zwarte Pieten, or Black Peters in English. However, en route to Dokkum, which is in Friesland, they were blocked on the motorway, the A7, by several Frisians who did not want them to go and protest at this festival where there would be a lot of children coming to see the arrival of Saint Nicholas or Sinterklaas in Dutch. Now, this led me to come onto this question, I wanted to highlight it, as this led to international following of the Zwarte Piet case and it's always this time of year the Washington Post has put one up and various other American, British and no doubt other newspapers have posted theirs about why they think it's so terrible Zwarte Piet and how racist it is and how this Dutch blackface tradition has to stop now. But I thought I'd analyse this, the history of it, not only because I'm interested, but I'd like to hear your opinions as well. So in this video the question is, is Zwarte Piet racist? Now many people will not be aware of who he is. I do actually have a video that I put up recently about Sinterklaas, which you can all go and watch, and that's a lot of background on Sinterklaas especially, although I haven't mentioned that much about Zwarte Piet because I'd like to analyse that in this video. Now, for those of you who don't know, Zwarte Piet is one of the helpers, or usually there are many Pieten, as they are called, which is the plural of Piet in uh, Dutch, uh, who are helping Sinterklaas, so St. Nicholas, who is the present giver around the festive season in the Netherlands and Belgium and a few other areas. Many people unfamiliar with the tradition see a black man being forced to work for a white man and instantly go, that's racist. They sort of assume that St. Nicholas is this kind of ultra imperialistic, nationalistic, evil boogeyman with all these slaves who he's forcing to work for him. But in actual fact, the story is a lot deeper and this is not at all the case. The historical St. Nicholas was a bishop in Turkey who lived in the 3rd and 4th centuries AD. Needless to say, this is long before the Dutch involvement in the transatlantic slave trade, which was during the 17th and 18th centuries. So St. Nicholas himself definitely wasn't involved in the slave trade in that sense, of that we can be very sure. Now, one of the reasons as well why Zwarte Piet is clearly not a slave is his attire. If you look at this, this does not look like someone who is out picking cotton at all. This is someone wearing very nice clothes. In fact, the clothes are based on Spanish or Moorish clothes from the Renaissance period. The fact St. Nicholas was a member of the church as well again decreases the likelihood that Zwarte Piet is indeed based on a slave figure that St. Nicholas himself owned, as the church was very much against slavery throughout most of its history and in most of its on incarnations being um, one of the main factors in the drive to end the European slave trade in the Dark Ages, for example, and then again the emancipation in the Americas and in Africa and other parts of the world. Now, there's even a story going around that dates back to the 19th century, although possibly even before that, that St. Nicholas and the original Zwarte Piet, his original helper, was actually a slave boy that he had freed from the court of Babylon at the time which is an interesting story if it's true, although with a lot of Sinterklaas stories we are not sure how true it is or if it's just a legend, and there are lots of different stories, some of which may be true, some of which might not be, or they might all be true and all essentially be different origin stories that have come together, which I personally think is the case. A lot of the grievances to do with Zwarte Piet indeed come from this misconception that he is a slave, which clearly is not the case. So if he's not a slave, which seems to be the obvious colonial answer for why there would be a black servant figure helping the Dutch Christmassy slash festive figure, then where does he come from? Well, this is actually quite an interesting story, and it goes back to New Amsterdam, which was New York before it became British, and has to do with oranges. Now, there is a, an old verse, one of the oldest ones being found actually in New York from the time of the Dutch, which reads, Van Amsterdam naar Spanje, appeltjes van oranje. 
pruimpjes van de bomen Sinterklaas zal komen. Which translates to from Amsterdam to Spain, apples from oranges, little plums from the trees, St. Nicholas will come. And this is because oranges were seen as a delicacy back in the day. And oranges were associated with, you guessed it, Spain. Now Spain is going to be an important connection for the story of Zwarte Piet. Because who ruled Spain for a long time? The Moors. And the Moors, some of them, were indeed African and had black skin. And this might explain then, with the orange connection, why also when he arrives in Dokum, for example, on the steamboat, why the legend is that he comes from Spain and not from Turkey, where St. Nicholas was actually from, because remember he was a Greek bishop in Turkey from the 4th century. But this idea that because of the oranges, which were a delicacy, which were given out on uh, Sinterklaas Arfont in New Amsterdam, that then he came from Spain. And this idea that he came from Spain might then lend itself to the fact he might have Moorish, therefore black, helpers. And also explain why the people dressed up as Zwarte Piet always put on the wigs of the curly hair and the nice red lips because people in Spain are famous for having these features which again links back to this Spanish connection as well as the Moors. Now one of the threats which is very interesting which is actually linked to slavery but not in the way you might think is especially in the older tradition the Zwarte Pieten, although they do come and they hand out paper noten and the chocolate letters, so essentially the, the sweets marzipan as well, all these Dutch sweets to the kids, they also have a threat that they bring, that if the children are naughty, so essentially just like Santa Claus, where he puts the uh, coal in the, uh, the stockings rather than sweets and things, if the children in the Dutch-speaking areas, if they are naughty, then they threaten to take them back to Spain with them, in the sack and this might come back to the Barbary slave trade which during a lot of large part of the Middle Ages and even the Age of Enlightenment lots of pirates uh, from North Africa the Barbary states raided Europe including the Netherlands and took slaves from there to North Africa and obviously sold them into bondage and this is where this idea comes from because obviously while the Moors were in Spain they came from North Africa so this again links into this Moorish idea with Zwarte Piet that this tradition might be seen as harking back to when people were literally stolen from their homes and taken back to Spain which I thought was an interesting addition to put in. Now, you can say that obviously Sinterklaas has many different reasons for perhaps having black helpers, so including this, this Moorish idea that I mentioned, as well as the freed slave, the legend about that, that he therefore um, is helping Sinterklaas because he helped to free him, as well as other ideas. But there are actually ideas about why Zwarte Piet is black, not because he's African, but because of other reasons. Now, a very interesting one that I found out about was the connection between Sinterklaas and the Germanic god Odin, or Vodun, depending on which tradition. Now, they both have a lot of things in common, as you can see, and as I mentioned in my Sinterklaas video, but there is also an interesting connection with Svarte Piet. Now, Odin has two ravens, Hugin, Thought, and Munin, Memory. And these ravens would traditionally sit and they on Odin's chair in his hall of Valhall, and they would fly out over the daytime and gather all the information, and then come back at nighttime and whisper in his ear what was going on in the world. Now this is similar to Zwarte Piet, who would also go out and make sure that the children were behaving, lest he take them back with them in the sack. And the Beaton are like the ravens in more senses than one. Obviously, the black from the ravens makes sense that the Beaton would then be black, linking back to this older tradition again. As well as the fact that the Beaton are said to go down the chimneys when they are delivering presents. And it, the old Norse tradition 
is that the two ravens, they would sit by the fire hole. Uh, so if you think back to a house in the Dark Ages, there wouldn't be a chimney, there would be a hole in the thatch for the smoke to come through. And the tradition is that Hugin and Moonen would sit here by this hole and listen to the conversations of the men down below so that they could go off and tell Odin what they had found out. So again, you see, this is a very interesting link to some of the things I normally talk about on the channel, which I thought I would include here. Um, so yeah, you see that obviously they would sit next to the chimney and find out what they could to then tell on to Odin. Now we also see linking in with this chimney idea, another little uh, one of these phrases from Sinterklaas songs, which are very popular. So this one reads, Wees maar gerust mijn kind, ik ben een goede vriend, want al ben ik zwart als roet, ik meen het toch goed. Which translates to, be at ease my child, I am a good friend, even if I am black as suit, I mean well. Now this can be taken, obviously, black as suit as a metaphor that this is an African of black skin colour and that he's saying, well, I'm a good friend. Because, of course, in the context of this, this is someone knocking on your door late at night with a sack of presents, a stranger in this case, um, and Svarte Piet, which is the tradition of Sinterklaas, they knock on the door and they have a, a bag of presents and that's essentially the gift-giving aspect of um, the Dutch festive winter season. Or it can be taken as again harking back to this older pagan tradition of Hugin and Munin sitting and listening by the fire holes to see what was going on. So black as suit, that's because obviously the suit from later on you had chimneys. If they'd been going down the chimney, then they would be all sooty, which would explain why their faces are black, because chimney sweeps back in the day also would have blackened faces from all the soot, uh, just as you would if you went down to deliver presents. Now, an interesting thing as well from 1859, which actually was four years before the abolition of slavery, the official abolition of slavery in the Netherlands, says Peter, mijn knecht, mijn knecht being my servant, is no less popular than the holy bishop himself. Which shows that, you know, four years before slavery was abolished, this was already a popular character. Would this be the case if indeed Zwarte Piet was based on a slave? I'm not so sure, but I thought this was an interesting addition to put in from the date, which was um, a newspaper, a popular newspaper at the time. Now as well, today we have to consider how this is affecting black people, and obviously Sinterklaas is mainly a children's festival, a children's thing. So of course it's important that we raise children to respect people of all races and not to discriminate. And one of the lines most used by uh, the anti Swarte Piet activists is that it's giving children a bad impression of Swarte Piet. And actually, at some points in history, earlier on, Zwarte Piet did have this kind of caricature, a, a little like Jim Crow in a sense of being this kind of the clumsy uh, yet happy um, black man who was not very intelligent and was always doing everything wrong, that kind of thing. And I think it's a good thing that we have moved on as a society from portraying the kind of dumb yet happy stereotypical black man um whereas now they the Zwarte Bieten are seen more as yes they are comedic but they are also very friendly um which i think is a positive thing and a actually a 2015 study did find that kids aged between five and seven didn't actually see the Zwarte Pieten as being black people, but more as clowns or fantastical figures, um, which again shows that in, in a sense, the tradition is more important than the color of the person's skin, which I think is a, is a good thing for children to grow up with. So anyway, those have just been some of my thoughts about the history of Zwarte Piet and whether or not it's racist. Now, I would like everyone to get involved in the in the comments and leave a comment about what you think, if you agree with my judgment or disagree, have any more information or your own opinions. Um, but I would be very interested, but I would ask everyone to remain respectful of each other's opinions, uh, not to create a complete firestorm. Um, it's fine to disagree with each other and I'll probably disagree with a lot of the comments that come on this video and most of you will probably disagree with me and hey that's fine people disagree and can disagree but I ask that you're all sensible and adult about everything in the comment section and uh, 
have a have a decent discussion. I would I would like a nice discussion because at the end of the day, what I value the most is discussions about these topics, which I think is the way forward. So thank you very much for watching. I am History with Albert, and this has been my video about why I believe Svartipit is not a racist tradition and is in fact a positive thing that can be enjoyed by people of all races and shouldn't be demonized as this slavery thing, which it often mistakenly, especially in my opinion, is. So thank you for watching. If you're new here, I would very much appreciate if you give it a thumbs up, a quick subscribble, and I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching.